Hello everyone and welcome back to the Great Book of Grudges. My name is Nathan and we're back with another Total War Warhammer video. Today we're going to be continuing our mod highlight series on the SFO Grimhammer patch The Sundering. We're going to focus on a more detailed look towards Malekith the Witch King. Malekith is a base game character for Warhammer 2, meaning that he was introduced without any unique mechanics. The new SFO Grimhammer patch introduces a few new things for him to bring him more in line with all the recent DLC lords for the Dark Elves, so let's not waste any more time and check them out. Malekith's unique resource is centered around the capturing of major settlements. This is to keep the player as aggressive as possible, as Malekith's own lore focuses around warfare. The more of these major settlements you capture, the more of these resources you will generate. The resources themselves can be used on technologies or Malekith's unique forge. Let's check out the forge first. Malekith's new forge mechanic is a way to acquire some buffs for your faction, either permanently or through a 10 turn basis. There are 4 specific sections here, divided into 2 groups of 2. The first groups include the Erevanarian and Witch King tabs. Erevanarian will focus around buffing up specific troops, increasing their capabilities on the battlefield, while Witch King will focus around general campaign improvements. Extra campaign movement range, research rate, even Winds of Magic starting amount. While the second group of tabs, Harmony and Destruction will focus around very powerful faction-wide buffs. Though these buffs are acquired much later game, as you will require Nagaron to be at its tier 5 level, and you will need to acquire Malekith's unique military order and skill, which is unlocked at level 30. You may have noticed the low barrier of entry for these buffs, they only cost 100 early on. In fact, as soon as you start your campaign, you're already able to use one. However, as you can see on screen right now, there are certain factors which will make the cost increase. For example, here I recruited another Lord, and that's increased the cost for all these buffs by 25. This is to balance the fact that the buffs work faction wide, so of course the increase will keep things balanced. Of course, this unique resource is also used on your technology tab, where 40 new technologies have been added in for Malekith and Malekith alone. This is thanks to Binyu 10's Dark Phoenix Druki Immersion mod, which was integrated into SFO Grimhammer. As you can see, these are divided into their own specific sections, each with their own unique effects. Uniting the Druki will first require you to level up Nagarond, your capital city, to its fortress tier. You'll first get some buffs against your fellow Dark Elves to be able to bring them to heal, but the rest of the buffs follow around campaign quality of life. Extra income, increased construction speed, and generally anything that you want to make your faction a little bit more powerful. Places of power will require you to capture a few different locations, and as you can see on screen, they are quite varied. The buffs acquired are mostly focused around your battles, cooldown reduction of spells, and increased damage output for units above rank 7. The majority of them are more late game centered, yet still very useful. Claim Ulf 1 is focused around Malekith's possible ascension as the Phoenix King of the Elves. You'll first need to take over the settlement of Lawfern, and after which you can start going through some other technologies focused around each of the specific kingdoms in Ulf 1. Each of the kingdoms will provide you with specific buffs centered around their law interpretation of said kingdoms. These are all faction-wide buffs and quite useful, so you'll want to think about launching an invasion on Ulf 1 sooner rather than later. Road to World Empire will focus around other races in the Warhammer Fantasy world, and the way to start acquiring these technologies is to start taking over their faction racial capitals. Again, faction-wide buffs are available here, some of them quite powerful, but most of these races are very far from your reach, so you won't be acquiring them early on. This was implemented to keep you expanding throughout the Mortal Empire's campaign map. After completing three specific sections, which are centered around the High Elves, the Dark Elves, and the Wood Elves, you may unlock the Sons of Anarian research. This is a powerful late game research which will focus around making your troops stronger against fighting Norska, give them an extra passive ability known as Blood Frenzy which is on screen, and give all of your units the ability to cause fear, which of course is quite powerful but this is very late game. 
Malekith will have access to a completely unique unit known as the Shadowfire Guard, a mixture of the Black Guard of Nogarond and the Phoenix Guard from the High Elves. These are only acquirable when you have taken the Shrine of Asurian in Orthwan. The Shrine itself is now a very powerful and important strategic location for your faction. Not only are you able to recruit these units, but you'll also have access to two unique landmarks. The first landmark is the Corrupted Flame of Assyrian, which will provide a wide variety of faction bonuses, for example upkeep reduction for all armies faction-wide, and increased local recruitment capacity in all provinces. But the main benefit for this is the Diplomatic Relations plus 100 for all Dark Elf factions, and Diplomatic Relations plus 300 for all High Elf factions. This is more to center around that you have become the Phoenix King, and the High Elves now have to bow before you. And finally, the second landmark is the most unique building so far. This will allow Malekith to recruit High Elf units into his armies. Silverhelm, Silverhelms of Shields, White Lions of Shrace, Silverin Guard, and finally Phoenixes. This is to more represent the fact that he is now the Phoenix King. This itself follows the lore more so around the end times. With that, we've looked over the Malekith changes for the Sundering patch for SFO Grimhammer. What do you think about the changes so far? The mods patch itself is dropping at the end of this week. So before that, we will cover Morafi's changes too. Through my personal experience, Malekith feels a lot different. He's a bit more interesting to play now, as he follows more of a DLC route, but doesn't have to be so similar to the other Dark Elf Lords. But with that, my friends, we've come to the end of our video. Thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy the video, might I suggest giving the video a like, or even subscribing to the channel, as it really does help us out. In the description section below are various links to different social media platforms such as Facebook, Instagram and Discord. Also in the description section is an affiliate link with Element Games where you could buy loads of hobby based products, not just Warhammer, for 10 to 25% off. Making a purchase using that link and also our special code which is also in the description supports the channel at no extra cost to you, which we think is rather cool. A big thank you to our patrons, your support means the world to us, it's amazing that people want to help a small channel like us grow and get to our higher level of content. A big thank you to Gibraltar LUSC, Ryan Birch, Andrew Prince and Okro for subscribing to us at our fame level, you guys are super cool. And a big thank you to Edward Yule, VS Fasan, Aaron Whitman and Shaggy for subscribing to us at our king level, honestly we can't thank you all enough. And lastly, a big thank you to all of you for liking, sharing and commenting on these videos. Honestly, it's because of you guys that the channel has been growing at such a great pace lately, so we can't thank you all enough. But with that my friends, thank you so much for watching once again, and we shall see you all again very very soon. Have a good day.